All right. Good morning, Rhinos. What a morning it's been already. You know, I really, really, okay. I say this all the time. I'm going to take the stand and throw it out a window. So I don't know if you've ever had one of these stands that you put your phone in, right? So it has, it all, it all moves really well, right? Like it's very versatile. So you can move this and bend this and do all this other stuff. And then you open up the clamp to put your phone in. But in doing so, all of those versatile things that you bend and move, bend along with it. So you never actually have to stand exactly the way it was the day before. That said, you can't look at it and see if it's level just by looking at it. You have to actually go back to see where it is. And once you go back, you're out of reach to grip it, to change it. So you gotta constantly. So just to let you know, I spent three to four minutes before every call doing this. So today, because I'm a little bit late because I did trades this morning and everybody saw it, um, you have this frazzled Anthony, which is totally fun. Like Anthony's fun. All right, cool. So let's see what we got today. All right, everyone get in. We are going to teach a little bit more today. Okay. And today was a good day. We already made our 40%. I know, right? Pretty cool. But the 40% we made today had nothing at all to do with the charts. It had everything to do with your brain. You have to have the requisite. So, uh, so there is one member of this group that wrote me the rudest email the other day. And in life, when you can, the, to master life, which I have clearly not mastered, but I'm working on it, right? It's like every day you're trying to get better. You need to not be, you need to not be able to react at stuff. And you need to be able to take every punch, absorb it, take the good from it, get rid of the bad and move forward, right? I know. So in doing so, this really rude email that got sent to me the other day had a whole bunch of stuff written in it. And of the stuff written in it was, yeah, and you constantly say you're so smart, you should really stop doing that. Now, in fairness, the perspective, or at least the person that wrote it, the general consensus that I got from it was that they're not a good faith actor, right? Like they were writing this email because it's not the content of this platform that they're interested in, it's the stock picks. In fact, this person has even emailed me before, give me your algorithm, oh, you won't give it to me, why won't you give it to me, right? And that's fine, we, we will never kick anyone out. I, it is my job, it is my obligation as a steward of Rhino to constantly be able to morph and adopt to every different personality. So if one person says something that gets under my skin, well, how can you trust that person leading a company? If somebody could say something that makes me blow up, that's a problem, right? So I, every single moment of every day, exercise this practice. And this gentleman gave me a lot to practice about. That being said, the reason why sometimes I'll say, oh, okay, it's because you have to have a brain, is because A, I'm not reading from a script. But second of all, Things aren't as easy as, okay, hey, listen, I'm going to join this stock picker group and I'm going to get good stocks picked and I'm going to make money because people that believe that end up with zero. And unfortunately, this person doesn't have zero. They are one of those people that I truly believe just thinks everyone is like at their beck and call. Um, yeah, and, and it really was quite offensive. I remember I was, I was sitting there for like a half hour, had a response to this email. And I just wrote three sentences and we'll leave it at that. And this person may be in this chat right now. And it's not personal. I don't ever look at one person and take anything they say personally. Because everyone says whatever they say for the reasons they say it. I can't judge you. I don't know why you said it. But I do know I'm here and there is never a person that I'm going to disqualify. I will go to the end of the world for every single person. And I will always forgive every single person because no one person is going to change my life, except like my family, like my wife, right? That being said, and it reminds me of that because as I'm talking, I'm like, well, you had to have, you had to have a certain level of experience. You had to have a certain level of intelligence to do what we did this morning. And this is why. So Captain Stockpicker over there that thinks I thinks that he that I'm obligated to go ahead and make him money every single day, can go kick rocks, right? 
I do it for us. This is a learning platform. I will always teach. And today we're going to learn some stuff. We're going to teach. Huh. Wasn't that fun? I had to get that off my chest. So, as you recall, the last week or so, we have not made a trade. I think the last trade we made was for February 2nd, and it got sold February 3rd. And I think we took like, was that the one we took like 7% on? We just wanted to get out of it. Um, and that was a streak of five trades in a row, right? So we've been looking for our spots. And we saw that the market pulled back that Monday down the 1100, went up and it gave a reference point. Remember that we said there's a reference point. Now people can buy and sell stock knowing that if it gets to that point, they can sell it, which means they can buy it with unlimited upside and cap it at limited downside. And as a professional money manager, your job is not to go ahead and make your clients money every day. Your job is to manage the risk of the amount of money that you're going to make them. So if your job is to, if your parameters for your client is I'm going to make, I'm going to shoot to make you 10% this year, well, then that's not really that high of a bar, right? And that's not saying that that manager's bad, right? Like let, that's, that's, let's not confuse it for that. If you have a trillion dollars, you don't want anyone making you more than 10%. In fact, you don't want anyone making, you, you want them to make you 5% because now you're not thinking the money you can have, you're thinking the money you're risking losing. Because if I, if, if I have a trillion dollars and I go to you and I say, listen, I have a trillion dollars, what can you do with it? And you're like, yeah, listen, I can make it 200% by the end of the year. I look at you and I think you're an absolute joker. And that's me putting it nicely. Because the amount of risk you would have to take to make me 200% would mean I would never give you my money. Because I have no intention. If I have a trillion dollars, you think I need you to make me money to live? I don't. So I would go to someone that says, Amp, I could probably make you between 5 and 7%, but my main objective is that I will not lose you a single dollar. Every single thing we get into is going to be super hedged. I will not get into a position that doesn't give me a 3 to 1 upside, but a cap downside of a quarter percent. Now, I know that doesn't, I know you understood what I said, right? But the lingo just brought me to a world that I used to live in. That's a world where I understand what I just said to you very easily because I've said that many times, right? That's a different world. That's the person I want to work with because that person understands what I need. That being said, we understood that the market offered us that option that people can jump in, that professional money managers can now jump in and say, hey, listen, we have something to shoot against. I can go ahead and, and put positions on that limits my downside and uncap my upside, which is exactly what we saw. Remember the next day, it came, the market came down 900 points and then bounced back up. At that moment, you retested that bottom, so it's off to the races, which is why yesterday when we took a look at the stock market and we read the indexes, we were able to see, yeah, the Dow was underperforming. It was up 0.8%. The S&P was up 1.2% because that's a professional money managers. What index was up the most? The NASDAQ. All of your retail stock brokers that are go, 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 and they just want to go ahead. And, you better go ahead and buy this. Lift up your skirt, grab your balls. What are you doing? What are you doing? All those stocks were going. And we said to ourselves, are those the people we want to follow? Right? Like, we don't want to get into a market where the NASDAQ's the, the, the index that's up every day. Now, there's many factors and facets to everything. Right. So the NASDAQ could be up because it's the index that's got beaten up the most. So that's where the most opportunities go. Right. It could be that, too. But the NASDAQ traditionally is the go go stocks that everyone wants to get into. So that we gave, gave us a little pause, a, a little cause to pause. And we understood what this market's moving on. Right. Like we saw that there was no volume any of the days. The volume kept going down, which allowed us to say there's a bunch of participants that are sitting on the sidelines. They're waiting for something. We don't know what it is, but they're waiting for something. What can that be? Now, we also understood that in, in identifying what the participants have been doing, right? We drew trend lines yesterday. We drew ourselves a map. We knew that if it goes down but doesn't break this line, and again, I'm going to show you all this, right? So I'm just speaking about it. But for those that were with us yesterday, they know what I'm talking about. For those that are just joining us today, we're going to show it. But uh, this is a commentary, right? So if it didn't break this line and, and, and we were able to get in, we would. And then which do we get in? And where's the opportunity? Because it's a multifaceted approach. 
the reason why I just mentioned all the stuff in the beginning was that I was that I'm able to identify that this market is viable, that this market has professional money managers that are either in it or looking to get in it because they have reference points. Once you know that professional money managers have money on the sideline, i.e. the low volume, have reference points, i.e. the tested lows, then you know that you have that, that you potentially have a tidal wave of money flow that can move the market. Okay, so step one, you have to know that the market is looking to be bought. Step two, you have to be able to identify that the money exists to do so, right? Like, so say you're in sales and you're selling someone something and they say, no, they don't want it. And you say to them, well, well Mr. Jones, well, actually, time out before you get there. Be before you ever sell anyone anything, what's the thing that you need to know? Do they have the money to buy it? Now, you're not obligating them to buy it, but you don't want to waste your time if they don't have the money. That's exactly what we're doing. We need to make sure that the market has participants that have the money, they have a roadmap, and we're able to identify that. Because I'm not going to ask you to buy a Ferrari if you have $10 in your bank account. Because even if you want to buy a Ferrari, you can't afford a Ferrari. We know that there's people that can afford the stock market. Okay. So we have our roadmap. We know our participants. We know where the money is. Cool. Let's go. So now where's our opportunity? So why has been, why, what event is the most talked about event? And we've shared with you many times, right? Does the Fed raise rates in March? That's the name of the game. Now, we're not going to go through the entire commentary of why that's so important, but just know it really is, right? Like if you've been with us, you know how important that is. Whether they raise rates to combat inflation or they're not going to raise rates, whatever. That's the biggest story. So what was today? And we said this to you yesterday, right? So I, I say that because we have a lot of new people on and this program starts at 10. So people might say, well, Ann, you, you made a trade before 10. How was I supposed to know that? Like this program, uh, boo, Anthony. Well, if you were a participant in what we did yesterday, I made it very clear that we never trade stocks before 1030, but never say never because never is too long of a time. There are special circumstances that would allow us to participate in that. And we said yesterday that if this inflation number, because again, the consumer price index is the big daddy of inflation numbers. So if the market is uber worried about inflation and the big daddy of inflation numbers is today and the volume's been low and you have participants and you have money, it seems like, okay, this is kind of the main event. Like we should be ready for this moment. And we said yesterday, remember the 50-50 propositions? And if that number was hotter, We've already seen enough in this market to know people are looking to buy it. We already seen the trend lines. We know the map that as long as it didn't break those lines, it was still go, go, go. We see companies buying their own stock and buying other companies that if we had the opportunity and the market gave us the opportunity to go ahead and buy it because it pulled back what we believed would be irrationally on that number. Because if you take... <sighs> So much, right? And it gets me so frustrated because I'm going back to the beginning of the conversation about being smart. It's almost like every time I say that, I hear this guy now. I'm not. The point of the story is, where were we January and February of last year? Right? Where were we? Those one-year comparisons were January and February of 2020 because inflation numbers are not only month over month, but the important ones year over year. So what happened in January and February of 2020? Nothing. The world was fine. Therefore, the inflation numbers from January 2020 to January 2021 were even, right? Nothing really changed. There was no spike. There was no nothing. So what would the numbers be from January 2021 to January 2022? They're going to be a large spike because it discounted everything that happened in COVID. So when you take a look at, so like for instance, the in, in March 2020, right, COVID happened. The whole economy shut down, prices crashed. So one could say, well, look at the prices of goods and services. They came down. That's deflationary because prices came down. Because they came down so much, what does the comparisons look like a year afterwards when they start going up? They're multiplied because this was down. So that rate of change between when it was down because of a pandemic and when it was up because of money supply and an opening economy, it's a very, very large number. That's exactly what's happening. 
So once you get to, okay, so I know that's a bit confusing. That's what happened, which means when we get to March, 2022, when we go ahead and, when we go ahead and measure the rate of change of March, 2022 versus March, 2021, it's not going to be that high because the rate of change from March, 2021 for March, 20 was so big. So let's play it out, right? So let's say something cost a dollar in March, 2020. And then it costs two dollars in March 2022, 2021. That's a 100% rate increase, right? Like that's a 100% inflation increase. Well, what does it have to equal in March 2022 for that increase to continue increasing? In fact, if that price went from two to four, which was 100% from 2021 to 2022, the rate of change would be zero. There would be no inflation. It would be an equal rate of change because it was up 100, it's still up 100, the rate of change didn't change, right? Now, if something did not have that rate of change yet, this is that rate of change, meaning these numbers are going to be far higher than the ones in March, April, and May. I know that got a little confusing, but just trust that the inflation rate for this year is front and loaded. January and February are already expected to be the worst ones. Therefore, we said if that number comes in hot, it would be irrational because we already know not only is this going to be the worst number, but they actually get better as the year goes on by statistics, by mathematical approach. Isn't CPI only one month over month? No, it's month over month and it's year over year. So the year over year number was 7.5% this, uh, this month, which is the highest since January 1982. The month over a month was 0.9%, which was, I think, the highest since 82 as well. It's a 40-year number. Well, the highest in 40 years. So the point was, if the inflation number came out hot this morning, and again, everyone's waiting for it. This is the main event. Tyson comes to the ring. He has this inflation number. Boom. Well, then the market was going to take a hit because everyone said, oh, my God, inflation really, really is super duper bad. They're definitely going to raise rates. Oh, my God, look at the two-year bond. Look at the 10-year bond. Ah, tech. Oh, my God, tech is going to get thrown out a window because tech, again, so we'll, we'll share it with all of our new people. Tech is an innovative industry, meaning tech for a very long time will go unprofitable because you constantly got to invest in the software, in building it out. And then once you do, it's very profitable because it's an automatable business. But in doing so, because technology has a rate of innovation, tech companies most often go ahead and borrow money so they can continue funding the innovation, i.e. Netflix. I don't think Netflix makes money yet, but you would never say Netflix is a bad company. They need to continue borrowing to grow. And the idea is at some point they're going to make money. So it's an investment. Well, if you have to continue borrowing money, then it matters what the cost of that borrowing is. Because if the cost of borrowing is 0%, then hey, buy any tech company you want. If the cost of borrowing is, is 10%, whoa, if you can't make 10%, then you can't pay back your bonds. Therefore, no one's going to lend you money. Therefore, you're going to go bust, right? So the interest rate technology is very sensitive to that interest rate. So we understand that if the inflation number came out hotter than people thought, like higher, that was going to be an opportunity for anyone in tech because we already believe that that's going to come down naturally. And that as long as it held that trend line, we wanted to go ahead and take the opportunity to buy something in tech, right? Right. So why Twitter? Okay. So Twitter went ahead and reported numbers last night. And the numbers weren't good. In fact, they missed everything. So why would you buy it? Well, again, it goes back to being smart, being observant, things that you can't see on a chart. Do you remember what we've been speaking about the last two weeks? In fact, we've been speaking about it so much that we've been talking about the Russell 2000 index, that corporate America would rather own stock than government bonds. That's been the, that's been the theme. You see, what's really cool about me saying that right now is that anyone could come up with a theme, right? I think we're going to... But you're seeing it right in front of you. And we said this two, three weeks ago, and it's still happening. Every time a tech company or any time any company buys their own stock, it just goes ahead and vindicates our initial premise. The initial macro is the circus in town. That stocks is where your money needs to be, not government, government bonds, because you have to be an absolute crazy to lend the government any money. Therefore, companies will own 
always buy back their own stock or they'll look to buy other companies with all the extra cash flow they have because that's the best use for funds. So we've seen Facebook buy 20 billion worth of their own stock last year, uh, last quarter. We saw Amazon just initially initiate a, a 20 billion stock buyback for the first time in 10 years. We saw Microsoft buy an Activision. We saw some other company buy Zynga. Like all of this stuff, all of these companies are buying their own stock and buying other companies, which is the reason that we said, if we get a pullback, we wanna be in this market because the market participants, the executives, the most smartest people at the highest level are doing exactly that. They're buying stock. So why do we have to say, oh, well, you know what? I think the CEOs of these companies aren't actually that smart. In fact, I think I'm smarter than them and I'm gonna do something opposite. Now you could say that, right? More times than not, you're gonna be wrong. But here's the problem with that. You might say, well, Ant, you know what? What if you really are the smartest person in the world and they're, and, and they're wrong and you're right? Wouldn't that be what you're looking for? Yes and no, because what you're discounting is the market dynamics. The market is buyers and sellers. It's not on a piece of paper. People have to buy and sell. So the point is, even if I or you or whomever is the smartest person in the world, what you're following, how many other people believe you're the smartest person in the world? Because right now the consensus is the CEOs know their company better than anyone else's. And that's a good consensus to have. For that to be wrong, that would be like once in a bazillion years that the CEOs don't know the market as well as they should, right? Because CEOs run the companies. They know more about the companies than anyone else. Therefore, when they're buying stock, the analyst community uh, sees that, recommends it. The investor community sees that and acts on it, which means it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because they're doing it, all of these people are doing it. So even if they're wrong this one time, it doesn't matter. Because for them, by the time they're wrong, the market would have already went up because all of the buying already happened. So you can be the smartest person and you could still lose money because you have to understand how the market works. It's buyers and sellers. The more buyers, the higher it goes. The more sellers, the lower it goes. But you have to understand the behavior of groups. That's why my background is in behavioral science, which is why I'm able to apply it to stocks. So why Twitter? Well, A, for those that have been with us for a while, we like Twitter. We've made money on Twitter. We actually believe that the data that Twitter has and the options and the opportunities that they have are endless. Now, I understand that they aren't good at what they do, but let me ask you a question. If you want news, where do you go? Where do you hear breaking news first? Where can you go ahead and get the news that you're looking for? Where can you go ahead and find the news that you believe is true? It's all the same answer, it's Twitter. Now, whether Twitter can monetize being the news source of the world or not is really a job that's left to them. Now, Jack Dorsey, the founder, was the CEO. He stepped down. They have a new CEO. So by all accounts, one can say, well, they have a new CEO. He's going to figure it out. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And one can say, well, if this company represents the entirety of the news industry, how large is the news industry? One would say the news industry is quite large. How large is Twitter? Now, how, how can you tell how large? Yeah. You were too fast for me today, Mort. You know what, Robbie? It's about time that I beat you once, right? Like only once. Only one time have I ever beat Robbie, and that was today. Um, as it pertains to, okay, so how large is Twitter? First, let's talk, first, again, this is an educational program, right? How do you find out how large Twitter is? It's called market cap. The market cap of a company is the size of the market capitalization. The, the calculation of market capitalization is quite simple. It's the share price times the amount of shares that are outstanding. So every single share that exists in Twitter, if you multiply that times the share price of Twitter, you have the value of the company, the market capitalization. Coming into today, the market capitalization was 30.2, 30.25 30 billion. So 30 and a quarter billion, right? Now, how, what is the size of the news industry? Larger than that. So we feel comfortable that Twitter, one way or another, has a good, has a good path, right? Like they have, they, have, um, they have a good market that they could go after. They have a path to being a bigger company. Now, that's not important today 
But when you're buying something, you want to know that potentially this, what you're buying is undervalued. Okay, so we believe Twitter is the news industry. It's $30 billion. The news industry is larger than $30 billion. Therefore, Twitter is going to somehow be valued and find a way to go ahead and grow. Okay, cool. Anthony, that's, you know, that's not a today thing. That's like maybe a next five year thing. Fine. But the point is, large money invest in things 5, 10, 15 years. Meaning the only reason I'm sharing that with you today is it's relevant because if, so when stocks like Twitter come down and it's believed that it's coming down irrationally, then those people that have those valuations of what it can be worth 5, 10, 15 years from now, go ahead and, I'm sorry, I had two granola bars on the way to work today, and apparently the fiber is coming out my throat, but whatever. So those people say, okay, if the, if the stock gets to that price, get me. Let's go ahead and do it. A, give me a 1% allocation, right? Because then they start saying if the stock gets that low, they can get in, get on the board, start knocking things around. Hey, guys, you need to fire this guy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now, again, all of this means nothing to today. But when getting into a stock for a reason, you need to know that that reason is going to be known by the other people, that other people are able to identify that reason and value it like you do. Because again, the market is buyers and sellers. I need to make sure that if I'm going to buy a stock because I believe it's an opportunity, that there better be a bunch of other people that believe the same thing so I know I'm not going to lose money. I can be first. I can get to the stock before them. So what got me in the stock? Okay. So when they reported earnings yesterday, uh, and they were bad, they also announced that they were going to do a $4 billion stock buyback. Now that's a big deal. So let's put it together. We've already known that this market has exhibited companies demonstrating that they want to buy stock, not government bonds. And why? So you might say, Anthony, well, it's not a one or the other choice, but it is, right? So if a company has $200 billion sitting around that they're doing nothing with, you know what the shareholders do? They start freaking out. You have all this money, start giving it back to us. Give us a dividend, start buying back stock. Do something that makes our stock price go up. And when I say shareholders, I don't mean like me or you. I mean, big hedge funds buy 10% of the stock. Then they start putting out reports and saying they're going to see hostile takeovers uh, of the board. And they start saying the CEO and sending notes to them. And all of Wall Street starts so, Like no CEO in their right mind wants to have that much money on their balance sheet. They just don't. They want to have enough money on their balance sheet to get them through a year or two if like everything goes bad. But the rest of it, they need to go ahead and give it to their shareholders because the CEO is measured by stock price. Every CEO is measured by stock price, meaning every CEO is in their best interest wants the stock to go up. Therefore, if you have a bunch of money sitting around, do what you have to do to get the stock up. So when a company starts going ahead and putting, when they have all this money, you, get, you then see exactly what they want to do. Well, a company could say, all right, we have 200 billion in, uh, in, in, in money, but we think the market's fairly overvalued. We don't see the return on investment or return on equity by us purchasing additional equity in other stocks, other companies. So we're going to park it with the safety of the US government because it's a 100% guarantee. And we believe the inflation rates can be relatively tame, maybe a little bit of deflation, but we believe we're not going to lose money on this and it's guaranteed. And we will look for our better chances going forward, right? Now, you might not have heard them say, I, I hear people say that all the time, right? Like, I know that world. The fact that they're not doing that and they're buying stock tells you something. So we've seen all these companies do it. So is it a coincidence that Twitter did it as well? No. What is noteworthy, what is the market cap of Twitter coming into today? Do you remember that number? 30.249 billion. What is the buyback that Twitter's going to do? Four billion. What is the percentage of stock that they're going to buy back from themselves? 13 and a half percent. That's important. When a company says that they're going to buy 13 and a half percent of their own stock and went ahead and made sure that they went ahead and uh, highlighted that two billion of it's going to be on an accelerated basis. What does that mean? That means if this stock goes down at all, they're buying $2 billion right there. Okay. So here comes our 50-50 proposition. Is the soil fertile? 
Do we know if people have money? Do we know if people want to get in the market? Do we have a path? Do we have a map? Do we have a company buying their own stock? Do we have them saying they're going to do it on an accelerated basis? If the stock goes down, they're going to be right there. Is the company uh, have an opportunity in the industry that it operates in? Does it have a new CEO? Does it have a whole bunch of things that some rich person would say, yeah, buy me that stock? Yes, 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 yes. You check all the boxes. I'd buy that in a second. And you know what? I did. Why though? Like we said yesterday, if this market opens up down because that number, which we believe is going to, it was going to be hot anyway, but is irrational because we already knew it was going to be hot and that number is going to come down anyway, just due to calendar and calculation. And if the NASDAQ held over that line, that we would go ahead and identify a situation and purchase it. Twitter just happened to come out of the out of nowhere. I didn't even know they were reporting a six. I don't look at all the earnings. And I see that they reported. I saw those things and I said, please, God, let that number be hot today because this is going to be the easiest 40% I've ever made in my life. Which, by the way, I think it was. I'm not sure that I've ever made 40% in 22 minutes. And in truth, it's really 19 minutes because the stock got purchased from, the options got purchased from me at 9.33 a.m. And they got sold at 9.52 a.m. Um, so, Don, um, the only reason I was able to even know their buyback plans is because they said it. They reported earnings yesterday, and they said that's what they're going to do. So I want to go ahead and walk through, everyone, the, um, the autopsy of how this is done. So I shared the commentary. So let's go ahead and look how this happens. All right. So let's first take a oh, look at Twitter. Oh, what an easy one that was. In fact, I left so much money on the table because I could, we'll look at the options, but they're probably up much more than that. All right. So here's CNBC, right? So let's go to the front page of, well, I already have it here, right? Okay. So here's the front page of CNBC. So if you were just a casual person and you're like, I just want to check what's going on. All right, cool. This is CNBC, totally cool, blah, blah, blah. Twitter misses earnings expectations across the board, authorizes 4 billion in share buyback. Well, that's interesting. Let's click it. Okay. Twitter analyst earnings, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. Oh, new CEO. Okay, that's important. New CEOs get the benefit of the doubt because guess what? New CEOs do not have the legacy garbage that the last CEO has. In fact, the company, by the time they get a new CEO, has pretty much identified that the CEO that they have is no longer good, and no longer understands what the company needs. And especially if that original CEO is the founder. The founder, I will tell you, as a founder, I'm completely irrational when it comes to my own company. I don't even watch other people's lives on my own company because I'm too close to it. I I believe at this stage of the game, while we're still growing, I'm uniquely qualified for this company. I believe 10 years from now, when we hit all these growth metrics and all the success that I see, I believe other people will be more qualified to run the company then because they'll have a different skill set. My skill set's in visionary. It's not in, um, you know, uh, let's say uh, accounting or other things that you might need or supply chain, stuff like that, right? So we can say Twitter's a mature company. They are now at the point where they know what they need to be good at. In knowing what they need to be good at, you could imagine that during the CEO hiring process, the interview process, they went ahead and interviewed the CEO and said, what do you think, would, what do you think is the solution for Twitter? Now, again, I don't know if any of that happened. I could suspect it did. And again, none of that means anything today. It means something a year, two years, three years from now. But what it does mean is that investors and Opportunistic, intelligent investors see the stock and they say, okay, I'm going to hold this for the next three or four years. This is a reason to do so, right? Like we're at no point did anything I say matter for the 20, for the 19 minutes this trade lasted, but it does matter for the people that are getting into it for the next three, four, five years. And because they're getting into it, they're going to get into it at an opportune time which means maybe it did matter. When the stock was down this morning, that was an opportune time for them. 
Or other people said, all right, well, this stuff is going to be opportune to someone, so let me get in it first, right? Like these things matter. So you scroll down and here it is. Twitter announces a new $4 billion share buyback program. Half of that will be an accelerated share repurchase with the remaining being repurchased over time. In English, what does that mean? If this stock goes down, I will buy 2 billion right now. And the rest of that 2 billion, if you continue making our stock go down, we'll buy it there too. Well, if a company is telling me that they're gonna buy about 15% of their own stock if the thing is down, and let's see where the market started this morning, right? So once you understand that, you say, okay, this is, this is an opportunity. Like I wanna own Twitter, but do I, where's Twitter, right? So if you took a look at what Twitter was priced at last night, and I think we could do it right here, right? Um, let's see if we're able to. No, you can't. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you. So this is where Twitter was yesterday. It says the high was 37.92. In the pre-market this morning, before the inflation numbers came out, this was sitting at like $39, like, like a high number, like a number it should have been, because they're telling you that they're gonna buy 13% of their own stock. So if the company is telling you that they're gonna buy their own stock, wouldn't you wanna buy it before they do? Now you say, okay, yeah, they're gonna buy 4 billion of stock. How many shares is that? Like, how do I kind of know what they're gonna do? Well, you get your calculator out, right? 4 billion divided by the $37 and where did it close yesterday? 37.83 and closed that equals 106 million shares. Okay. Well, Anthony, they're only doing 2 billion on an accelerated basis. How much does that equal? Well, 53 million shares. Well, Anthony, what's the volume, the average volume of Twitter? I don't know, about, about 20 million shares. Okay. So that means this company is going to buy enough stock to be all the volume for three days in a row. Wouldn't you want to get in front of that? Wouldn't you want to buy that and sell it to them? Yes, but at what price? So when the stock was $38, $39, it's like, all right, it's already up a dollar or two. It kind of seems like the market priced this out, right? That makes sense. So where was the opportunity? When those inflation numbers came out, and the whole tech sector got annihilated. Do you know Twitter, look at, look at this. It got as low as $36.22. In fact, if we take a look at Twitter today, all right. This is where it opened because the whole market was down. Where did Anthony buy? Right over here. Where was the volume? Look how low that volume is. Nobody believed this price. And look at the volume jump. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want it. We want it, right? So that was the anatomy of that trade. That was the reason why I was able to identify Twitter as the, as, as the opportunity, right? So you had to start with macro. You had to have, you had to be a part of this program, really, for at least the last couple of days or if not weeks to understand the macro, where the circus is. Then you have to understand and observe what companies are doing with their own money. Then you have to be able to observe market activity, volume, trend lines, patterns. Then you have to be able to identify a unique situation that uh, is just yelling at you. Now, this one was easy. Twitter announced it, the stock went to 39. Then the market came in with a number that brought the stock down to 36. We said to ourselves, what's more important for Twitter? inflation numbers or that they're buying 13% of their stock back on an accelerated basis. We made the distinction, we made the educated point of view that what's more important for a stock in the very near term was that they were buying their own stock, not what macroeconomics and inflation rates and Federal Reserve rate decisions mean. That was our thesis. And in doing so, we made, all right, and let's, let's do it, right? Like, let's do the damn thing. All right, so let's take a look. Oh, day's gain realized, $1,559, right? So let's take a look at our orders. Okay, 
And what you'll see is, take a look, 210, that's today, at what time? Ooh, 934. So this, we did it in 18 minutes. Purchased 30 quantity at $1.32, right? Then take a look at sell. Sell 30 quantity at $1.85 at 952, which means in 18 minutes, we made 40% on that trade. Now, when we look back at it, do we wish that we went ahead and put our whole, our whole account into it? Of course, but you can't do stuff like that. We bought one quarter of it because guess what? Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our, all right, hold on. Okay, so that's Twitter. So let's go ahead and take a look at our, our map, right? Well, all right, so that was the anatomy of the trade. Now we're gonna take a look at our map and see what happened. So as you will see here, we built this map yesterday, right? We clearly said that these are our lines. In fact, you were with us yesterday. This was resistance. This used to be support, became resistance. You can see the trends. You can see the channels. It broke underneath. It, then you were able to map this forward. It broke out of that. And what we said was, if this market opens up lower and it does not break this line, this would be an opportune time to buy. I'm pretty sure we said that loud and clear. In fact, I remember even pounding this desk saying it. And I remember saying that the, the market opens at 930. So everyone, I want to let you know, if you're interested in seeing if I make a trade in the morning, make sure you go to Rhino Wealth Facebook group because that's where I'm going to be posting it. I don't know how much more transparent I can be, and not that anyone's telling me otherwise, but I always want to, again, there's nothing that I'm doing that is regular. I can promise you there is nobody on Wall Street that is making, all right, hold on, let's, you know what? There is nobody on Wall Street. Zoom, if I wanted you there, I'd put you there that has this record. They don't, it doesn't work like that. What's that, four red in two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 25. 21 out of 25 trades using options, all, what's the average? 40%, 60%, 40%, 40%, 50%, 40%, 40%, right? So it's not by accident. Um, in, in saying that though, why did we buy only a quarter? Well, because what if we bought here and the market continued moving lower? Because remember, the thing that held me back was that we have no volume. What if all of a sudden all the volume that was sitting on the sideline said, ha, this is what we're going after. We knew those inflation numbers were going to be high. Therefore, this is where we're going to destroy the market. And they all came in and sold. Well, this would go boom, 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 right? Because when it broke this line, what was the next line we were looking at over here? So can I risk putting 100% of my money here, knowing that if it breaks this, I'm going to lose 50, 60, 70, 80% of my money? Because again, it's options. You're betting a stock to be a certain price by a certain date. If this went ahead and tumbled, well, you could bet your bottom dollar that that option price would have got annihilated. So how cool would I look if I was sitting here saying, oh, great, guys, we lost 80% of our money today, but don't worry. I can't risk that. I, and in no reasonable sane adult should you ever risk that. So I purchased a quarter here because I said, I don't, how do I know that I'm going to get the market at the, uh, uh, how do I know that I was going to get the low, right? Maybe the market went lower in the day. And I bought a quarter because I was praying that it went lower. You can even ask my wife. She goes, hey, I'm going to buy it here. I said, I'm only buying a quarter because I'm hoping it goes low. And then she like totally scammed me and said, oh, I can't buy it. Let me have one of yours. And I said, fine. And then 10 seconds later, it got sold 40% higher. And I was like, I see what you did, but we're married. So it's okay. So she, I really have 29. She took one of them and she totally scammed me for it, but that's okay. Um, so I was hoping it went lower and I'd be able to buy more here, but it didn't. So am I upset that I made 40% that 
that I made about $2,000 in 18 minutes today. No, I'm not. And why am I not? It's not about the money for me, right? I enjoy, I despise people on Wall Street. I think they're the dirtiest dirtbags ever in the history of the world. And that's not me saying that them personally are bad people. It's the industry that they bought into that has poisoned them to believe that the things that they're doing is simply trading paper when the residual effect is at destroying an economy, uh, an entire economic class structure. I just don't like that. And I don't like the things they do because I've seen what they do. So my joy is in offering a platform that I'm able to teach you to actually be better than them. There is no one on Wall Street that has this performance. In fact, a lot of people email me and say, why don't you just open a fund? Well, I used to work on Wall Street. I left there. I'm banned from Wall Street because I didn't give them their proper um, exit documents. And I said, fine, ban me. I don't really care. Go kick rocks. So I, I couldn't open a fund if I wanted to to begin with. But I could do the next best thing. I could teach how to do it. I could charge nothing. I could do it right in front of you, right? Like I could do stuff like that. And that's what we're doing. All right. So let's just take a look at stuff, though, because I know I just spent a lot of time talking about what already happened today. And some people might be saying, well, what do we do going forward? To those people, I cannot go ahead and in good conscience make a trade for the simple fact of tickling someone's fancy. I won't do it. If I do not believe a trade is going to be profitable, I'm not going to do it. If I don't believe that the odds are in my favor, 80, 90%, I won't do it. Because I don't believe it's cool to lose money just because you wanted to scratch an itch, right? So if you miss this one, that's okay. We're still learning every day. In fact, the whole anatomy of this trade is things that we have taught and you would have learned over the last week or two. So anyone here could have woke up this morning and said, oh, whoa, Twitter. I'm going to buy it for all these reasons. Because every reason I shared with you, we've already shared, duh, they're already known, right? So let's see what we got going on today. I see four chats. So let me just kind of look at that over. What made you break? I thought, oh, so Jean-Pierre, um, I'm assuming you weren't with us yesterday. At the end of the call yesterday, the last 10 minutes, I said, the inflation numbers come out at 8.30 a.m. Those are going to be market moving. If that number is hot, the market's going to open lower. Because we do not believe that number to actually be logically important, just simply emotionally important, we want to take advantage of the market starting low because we believe that it's going to rebound and rehab that quite quickly. So we said tomorrow we will be doing a trade. No, don't say sorry. Totally cool. Uh, but that's a good question because I don't trade between 9 and 10 a.m because we call that rookie hour. That's where a lot of emotions go. But this trade was to go ahead and, and take advantage of other people's emotions. So by definition, we wanted to trade in an emotional time because we believed that we could take advantage of the drunk throwing his hands in the air because we're sober and we're like, buddy, get out of here, see you later. Because you know who's really mad right now? The person that sold me the calls at $1.32. He's not happy. He's what we call a sucker. My wife and I always say that. Hey, did you buy it from the sucker today? Did you sell it to the sucker? Yeah, babe, we got the sucker tonight. Um, so is the Twitter opportunity over? Uh, no, I... So here's the thing, right? I don't believe the Twitter opportunity is over. I believe it can continue going higher because everything that we said is conducive to the stock going higher. Um, that being said we went ahead and made our money very quickly. So I'm not going to revisit it. If the stock came back down, I might revisit it. Now we believe it's more longer term. We believe this month is going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. We believe March going forward, the market's just going to be higher. So if I did not have, a, if I wanted to own Twitter and I did not own it, I would buy maybe 25, maybe even as much as 33% of my position two months out, uh, I would buy them for April. Because we do believe it's gonna go higher, but I, I just couldn't tell you if it's gonna go higher today or tomorrow. This morning, I felt quite certain to myself that it was going to go up. So I was able to take advantage of it. But that already happened, right? Like Twitter's now 38.23. When we did, it was 36. That's like a big move. Um, so 
that's that. Uh, so I was like, okay, let me see. I think I have a Q&A somewhere. Oh, what's the Facebook group? Um, so let me get that because those that aren't in the group, you should be. Um, okay. Let's see, how do I do this? Can I just copy and paste? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. All right, um, I'm putting this in the group. This was a question by one of the members rather than answering them back personally, uh, I'll share it with everyone. Um, just go in there and actually what's really cool is you'll see that at nine, I think I even said it before the market opened. Oh, how cool is this? I guess you know who did it, <laughs> approve. So if we go in the group, what you'll see, I don't understand why Zoom does that to me. Okay, so what you'll see is, good morning, rhinos. How do I tell what time this is? Oh, see that, 9.27 a.m.? Good morning, Ryan. I plan to buy one quarter position in Twitter, March $40 calls at the open. And actually, so the reason this looks like a, a, a second grader wrote it, and I do this on purpose, I've been meaning to address this. In Facebook, their algorithm catches things like buy, sell, dollar signs, all that stuff. So I purposely write it like a two-year-old uh, so, so that Facebook thinks it's just regular conversation. Because if they start picking up that we're, I'm buying this at this, that is, they start flagging you as a marketplace and it's just different. It's just, it's a bag of worms we don't want to get into. But the point is you could have read this at 927 because I'm accountable to you. I said yesterday that I was going to do that and I did it. Then look at this time, 9.35 AM, purchase 25 position, Twitter 40 March calls, dollar 32. If it goes lower, I will be there. This is my beautiful son. I love him to death. And look, sold it, right? 9.52. So you would have seen it. It's all right there. Um, so that's that. Oh, okay. So let's see what's going forward, right? It's eight minutes left. Anthony, stop patting yourself on the back. You're like an octopus. Eight arms are patting you. I get it. I get it. <coughs> Boo, Anthony. Okay. So let's see where the QQQs are. <sighs> now, what you will find is that the volume went down from yesterday. But because today was inflation day and the market started up down two, 300, um, the volume is going to be higher today. So let's see where the market shakes out. Because really, the, the market's down right now, right? Um, the volume is going to be higher. Look at the volatility. It's spiking up a little bit. So you have volume that looks like it's going to be higher. Volatility that looks like it's going to be higher. And a price that you, looks like it's going to be lower. What do we know about price down, volume up, volatility up? That's like the tripod of like the worst thing ever. That means in our belief, we believe the market might come down. So we're going to watch what it does today. But if I had a gambling bone in my body, I would short this market right now. But I don't, right? Like I... If I were to buy puts, right? Like if I were to bet the market would go lower, what is my, what do I believe the likelihood of that is? What is the probability I think I'd be correct? 63 to 65%. Now that might be enough for some people. That's not enough for me. If I don't feel 80% confident in a trade, I'm not doing it. So if this market ends up down and this volume spikes and this volatility spikes, and the market opens up up tomorrow, we'll take a short position and we'll short it right to this line because we believe it looks like it wants to touch it. That's our opinion. But we need the market to go ahead and confirm that for us. Now, what do we have here? PayPal re rebound a little bit, but is it rebounding much? It's up 80 cents today. Facebook finally rebounded yesterday. No follow through. In fact, it was higher in the day. Now it's midway through the day. Chipotle had great earnings yesterday, already down $25, giving it back. Lucid, we want to kick ourselves 16 red and green, and we didn't do it. But as you can see, it's right at the top of their trend line, right? So maybe it's going to come in a little bit. Caterpillar, we wanted to own, and I'm still, you can ask my wife. I was like, maybe I'll buy Caterpillar today. We missed this one, but we watched it. We wanted it. 
oh, gets me so frustrated. I wanted Caterpillar so bad. So maybe we'll revisit it. Kellogg's, we, uh, oh my God. <laughs> do you remember yesterday us looking at Kellogg's 15 red and green? And what do we say? Well, Kellogg's really doesn't move all that much or else we'd be getting into it. She's Louise. Kellogg's was up what, like 6% today? Do you know how cheap options in Kellogg's are because it does not move its cornflakes? This could have made 100%. So we made 40%, could have been 100. Um, let's see, IWM is still up, but look at the volume. So I believe I've, IWM actually has its own volatility. Um, where is it? Volatility, Russell, right? Okay. No, you mo. Right, so what do we have here? Price moving very strongly higher. Volume moving strongly lower. Volatility moving lower. Um, that would say that price is probably going to come down soon. So again, even when the strongest, oh, we'll take a look at this. Didn't even see that. All right, Ant, what'd you just do? Oh, we had a trend line. Now look where the stock's getting. Do you think it's any coincidence it's starting to stall here? Do you think it's any coincidence the volume has dried up? Because everyone that was here was like, yo, get me out, let me sell. If I could just get my money back, I would get out of this thing. So actually it looks like my 63% is now 67%. I think this market's gonna come in. So let's let it do its thing today. We are not gamblers. Um, let's hope that it starts off tomorrow. I'll tell you this, here's another 50-50 proposition. If the volume spikes today on a market coming in and volatility starts spiking and all of these indexes get to their support and resistance trend lines, we will go ahead and the market starts up tomorrow, we will go ahead and take a short position. Um, would I do it before nine, before 10 a.m.? Mm, no, I will not do a trade tomorrow before we're on live, but I will want to short it. Um, yeah, I'm not, I won't do the trade. I won't do the trade. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to get going. Why short if the mark? Oh, okay. So Dom. So because we're looking at all of these indexes and we're seeing signs of exhaustion, like there's no volume while it's going up and people are becoming very complacent. Uh, that's what the IWM, which has been the strongest index this week. And then when you take a look at the uh, NASDAQ, the QQQs, and you see that uh, price is coming down while volume's coming down. Well, price is coming down while volume's likely going to be higher than it was yesterday. So volume up, price down, and you see volatility starting to turn up. All of these are indicators that the market's likely going to take a near-term pullback. That being said, if we see all that, now it's just a matter of price points. If the market starts down tomorrow, is the, is the down the market started all, already happened? Is that the pullback? Because if it is, we're not going to short a pullback that already happened. But if we believe it's gonna pull back and the market starts up, now we have a really good entry point because it's up here and we think it's gonna get here. So we'll ride it all the way down. So if the market starts up and all of these things happened, no, my pleasure, um, then we will. And Don, actually I've been meaning to, can you email me the date of the, and if you already did, I'm embarrassed to say this, but I know you had invited me to an event. Can you just email me that date so I can put it in the calendar? Thank you. Um, Cause I wanna make sure that I'm there and my life is, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to start scheduling when I go to the bathroom, right? Like that's how scheduled life is. All right, guys, totally cool. I'm not going to look at the market because I already made my 40% and anyone that participated or not participated with me, but I don't know. If you did too, uh, congratulations. Oh, one last thing. I do want to, just because I'm a glutton for punishment, I do want to see how high those went. Come on. All right. So we sold it at $1.85. I really, like, I kind of don't want to look right now. 
these 40s. All right, details. This is where it sold for us, right over here, right? 950, you see the time down here? 951. It sold for us at 952. Okay, so right there. It then went to two. Oh, so we really didn't miss much. I mean, we missed 15 additional cents, which means 68 cents on a dollar 32 is basically 50%. So the max we could have done today is 50%. We did 40%. And now look where it is, $1.50. Do you know how mad I'd be right now if I held it this whole way? Here's where we got in, here's where we got out. See you later, Martin. Guys, love you so much. Uh, be on at two o'clock. I think V is going to tell you a funny joke. I don't know if that's true, but be on, she's amazing. All right, love everyone, bye.